Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at uh, OS X Server and we're going to take a look at the Net Install service that's built into Server. Now, Net Install allows you to uh, do several things with a disk image uh, of OS X. Uh, it allows you to load up uh, disk images for uh, different versions of OS X, whether that's Mavericks or Mountain Lion or Lion. Uh, you can load up those various uh, disk images in there. And then it lets you do several things with those disk images once you've got them enrolled in the Net Install system. Uh, it gives you the option to either uh, net boot, which means that you could boot from one of those images, so that if you've got a computer on your network uh, that you want to boot into a uh, disk image, they could actually uh, you know, hold down the option key when they go to start up the computer and then boot into that image that you have hosted on your server that would run a full, insta uh, a full install of OS X. Uh, you can also do net install, which is basically uh, allowing clients to install OS X from an image that you have hosted on your server. So it works similar to the uh, recovery uh, partition that's on uh, OS X, uh, but allows you to boot a custom uh, image off of your server. So that if someone needs to do a clean install, they can do that. And you can set up all kinds of custom rules and things ahead of time so that their install is unique to whatever you want to set up. And then finally, um, you've got the uh, you know you've got the net uh, restore uh, function, which basically allows you to uh, you know uh, image a computer. So you might take a, a, a basic disk image of a particular computer that's set up the way you want it to, and then you can restore from that image a computer that needs to have that happen can do that from the server. So you've got those options: the net boot, net install, and net restore uh, features built into net install. So basically that's what that service does. Now before we actually set up the service we've got to have some images that we can use uh, to be able to uh, boot from or restore or install from. And so in order to do that uh, there's a couple of things we need to do. Now the first thing that you're going to want to do is go to the App Store and you want to find uh, the install of whatever OS X uh, image that you want. So in this case, since we're using Mavericks, I've downloaded uh, my Mavericks install. Like I said, you can do that for Mountain Lion, you can do that for Lion uh, through the App Store, or if you've got uh, the old disks for older versions, uh, you can go ahead and load those up as well and use those to create your disk image. So it, it's, uh, it's pretty flexible because it allows you to do some of those older installs as well. So once you've downloaded this, and you can see that I've already done it, let me just uh, put this down here and let's just pull up uh, finder for a minute. You can see that I've got uh, in my applications folder this install OS 10 Mavericks. Now the beauty of this is that uh, the net, uh, the disk uh, imaging service actually picks this up and will use this to create the disk image that we need to create. Uh, so you just want to make sure that that's in there. Uh, in uh, previous versions, if you're using um, Mountain Lion uh, or something like that, you would have to actually drill through here and remove the disk image that's inside this package and mount that first before uh, the uh, system imaging utility would actually pick it up, but this time they've improved that so it just has to be in your applications folder and ready to go. So I just wanted to point that out to you, so let's go ahead and put this down. Okay, so now the first thing we need to do is actually create an image that we can use, and so in order to do that you want to come up to the menu here, and make sure you've clicked on the server so it's the server menu. You go to tools and you want to uh, start system image utility up here. And so once we've started that, you'll notice that it's picked up our install disk. It already knows our install disk is there. It knows the install size. It knows it's 10.9.3, uh, even the build number on there. You know, if you had multiple images on there, you get a drop down with those images and you could choose the one that you wanted to create the disk image from. Uh, so I just want to let you know that that's on there. So it's really nice that they've added that integration. Now, from there, we have to, to select the type of network image we want to create. And so, as I said before, you have NetBoot, which allows you to boot over a network uh, from a server-based uh, disk image. You have NetInstall, which allows you to stall over a network from a hosted disk image. And then you've got NetRestore, which allows you to restore a volume over a network uh, with the Apple Software Restore disk image. And that's what that will create. Uh, in this case, what we're going to do is just create a NetInstall image because uh, I want to show you how that works. Now you'll notice down below it'll say continue to create that or you can come in here and customize it. And so let me show you that. Let's click customize. You just have to agree uh, to the software licensing agreement. And you'll notice once we're brought in here, let me just uh, bring this down. Once we're brought to this window, uh, we've got two windows that pop up. And you'll notice this looks very familiar to what you see in Automator. 
and really it is kind of an automator uh, window that allows you to customize the install of this OS 10 disk image that you're going to do. So it's not just going to be a plain disk image, you can actually customize what you want to do with it. So you can see here the first things we've got is define the image source and so again we only have one source, that's our uh, Mavericks install uh, disk there. Uh, you can say create the type of image you want to create, uh, where you want to save the image to, and so you can actually choose uh, you know, the folders and where you want it to be saved to. Uh, you can create, uh, you can set the image name here. Uh, you can call it net install of Mavericks uh, if you wanted to, or you could just call it Mavericks, or you could do 10.9, you can customize that. Uh, you got the network disk that you can customize on here in the index, and you can even put some uh, more information about the description if you wanted to uh, right in there. Now, you can add more things over on the side here. If you notice, um, you can do all kinds of things. You can add install scripts if you wanted to. You could add a, a user account. Um, you got system settings you can put in there. Uh, you can create um, a custom image. You can customize the package. Uh, you can see there's a whole bunch of things. You can even do this if you wanted to. You can come in here and uh, say, you know what, before we're going to do that, what I want to do is first we're going to actually partition the disk because I want to wipe the drive out before the install happens just in case something's wrong. Uh, I want to name it uh, something, you know, like I might name it, you know, uh, you know, Mac HD. That's what I want the hard drive to be named. Make sure that it's uh, maybe journaled uh, so I've got that the way I want it. Uh, I can uh, then set up the partition however I want. I can split the partition up. I can say partition the first disk found. So you can see all these different things that I can do uh, ahead of time, and it'll run in order. It'll say first partition the disk, then define the source, then do the net install. And so, uh, as I said, you can filter clients by MAC addresses. There's all kinds of different things you can do here uh, to actually make uh, the disk image the way you want to make it. And so it's nice that it's got that, and literally it's pulling it right out of the Automator library here. Uh, so it makes it easier for you. So just want to let you know you can custom uh, customize the install if you wanted to do that. I'm going to go back uh, because I don't want to customize it. Let me just uh, close this out. Let's see if I hit customize again. See if it just put me back to normal. And it did. Just want to make sure it's back to normal. So we're going to go back now. And we're just going to make a net install image. We're just going to do it straight up. And so we're going to click continue. And again, it says here's the image settings that I've got, and uh, is this image going to be served for more than one server? So if you've got multiple servers, uh, you can set it up so that uh, all the servers have access to it as well. Um, we're going to just uh, leave it this way. And I think what we're going to do is I'm just going to say, um, we're going to go, I'm just going to name it uh, OS 10 Mavericks. And what I'm going to, and, and it's got the description of 10.9.3, so I'm just going to leave it alone, but I'm going to put Mavericks, that's how I want to name it. So we're going to say create. And so it's going to say, again, accept the licensing terms. We're going to agree. So it's saving it as OS 10 Mavericks. I can tag it if I want to. And now I can choose where I want to serve that up from. So I can choose a particular uh, folder from my recent places if I wanted to do that. I can expand it if I want to. And maybe what I want to do is put it on a, you know, an external drive. So I've got my, my Drobo here. And so maybe on the Drobo, I'd put it under, you know, I've got shared items I could use here for backups. Uh, but I think what I'll do is I'm going to put it under, um, let's just put it under the server backup folder. So that's where it's going to save it, and it's going to ask me now to authenticate. So I'm going to do that, say OK. And so now it's going to start creating the disk image. And what's nice is that it's going to walk us through the process of setting it up. And so it could take a little bit of time to do that. What I'm going to do is uh, let it run. And once it's run all the way through its course, uh, I'll come back and we'll see what it looks like. As you can see, it's starting to create it here. And uh, again, it'll take a little bit of time, but uh, shouldn't be shouldn't be too bad. So I'll come back when it's done. Okay, here we are at the end of creating the image utility. You can see we've got green checks all the way down. Everything's set and ready to go. So we just click Done. And now it just takes us back to the beginning if we wanted to create another image, right? We can install another one if we wanted to or create uh, a different type of image, maybe a net boot or net restore image. I'm going to uh, leave that alone for now. So let me just go ahead and close this. And so here we are back in our server. Now, you'll notice that I've got my image here. Now, part of the reason for that is, let me just uh, show you this. Uh, if you remember, I uh, installed, let me just pull up a finder window here. And if you remember, I put the disk image in this server backup folder. And that's where I had had it originally. You notice it's not there. Uh, that's because the uh, server basically wants it stored in a very particular folder structure. Let me just show you that. Uh, when you come in here, you can see it says Edit Storage Settings. You want to click on that. 
and choose where you want your images to be placed. So I can place them on any drives I've got. I decided to place it on my Drobo there. And if you notice the drop down, you can say you can have images uh, and client data on the Drobo. You can have images only. Uh, you can have client data only or none. And so I just chose to put images and client data on there. Now when you do that, you'll notice here it says that the images need to be placed in this uh, structure under library netboot and then netboot sp0. And client data is going to be stored in library netboot netboot clients 0. All right, so that's where it's going to want to store it. So pick wherever you want it to be. You can set it up that way. We say OK. And then if we come back into the Finder window, what I did is I took it out of this folder and we moved it to the structure that was set up. So server set up a library netboot folder for us. And you can see there's the clients and the SPO. And so we move it inside the SP0 folder. And there's the actual netboot client that was set up with the install uh, DMG and all the information that we need. Okay, so that's where that's placed. I just want to make sure I point that out because otherwise you go, hey, where's my image? How come nothing's showing up? Uh, that's why it needs to be placed in that folder structure. Okay, so here we are. You, know, you can see that I already went over editing the storage settings. Now there's just a few more settings that we have that we can use with net install service. Uh, you can enable net install on either your uh, Ethernet or if you've got another uh, type of interface. You can enable it on that as well. Uh, you, I guess you can technically do it on Wi-Fi, uh, but like I said, it doesn't work so well for the rest of your server settings, so most likely it's just going to be on your Ethernet uh, connection anyway. So we're going to say OK. Now you can also restrict access to images if you want to, and you can do that by MAC address. Just by putting in a MAC address uh, number here, it will say basically that these install, this, these install images are only valid for these machines. And so if you wanted to just restrict it to particular machines so that nobody else made a mistake and installed something they weren't supposed to install or, or use the net image, uh, you can do that by MAC address and just say basically only these computers can have access to it. Now we're going to cancel that because we don't want to restrict our access. Now here's my images. I can have multiple images in here. You can see there's my Mavericks image I created. Uh, I've got the little wheel down here. I can edit the uh, image settings if I want to. So if I just uh, click on that, uh, I can make it available over and I can choose my uh, protocol, either HTTP, which is kind of over the web uh, interface, or I could do it over NFS if I wanted to, which is uh, basically the uh, file sharing. So I can do it one way or the other. Uh, HTTP is fine. I'll just do it that way. Uh, I can make uh, the image visible to all Mac models, or I can say only some Mac models. And when I uh, do that, it's going to bring a drop down that gives me all the different Mac models. And I can say, hey, I only want this image available to certain models. Now, this comes in handy when you've got older installs of OS X. Maybe you have some older Macs uh, in your network. And you want to limit, uh, let's say, Leopard to you know the older machines, not to the newer ones. Uh, you can go in here and select which ones you want to have that particular image effective for. So again, really nice, especially if you're managing you know, a bunch of computers from different uh, ranges. It allows you to restrict certain images to certain computers. So it works out really well. That way, if things go wrong, uh, you don't have that uh, happening for those uh, computers. Uh, you also have an advanced. You've got an image index. Uh, you can edit your image index if you want to and change the number uh, if you want to make that happen. Again, usually it's fine at the default, so I'm just going to leave it alone. Uh, so there, there's one way that you can do that. Let me just cancel. So that's how you edit the uh, image uh, settings itself. You can also say use as default boot image. And so when you click on that, it basically is going to make this image the default boot image. Now since it's the only one, uh, it's really not making any difference. But if you had multiple ones, uh, it would make a difference as to which uh, image you'd be using. And you can see, see how it says default right there? So I know that this is the default. Uh, again, really only effective if I have multiple images. Now the other thing I've got is I've got connections over here, and so as clients uh, connect to this net install image, I can see their, their host name, IP address, status, and progress as well. And that, uh, that lets me know who's connected and how they're using the service. And so it just kind of allows me to get an overview of how net install is working. So all we got to do then to get it started is throw the switch, and it's, it's going to start up the service for me. You can see it says starting, and now it's available in the startup disk pane of system preferences for OS X clients. So they can actually boot right into it. Uh, now, I don't think it's effective on my server, but let's just go ahead and check on system preferences here. And we'll go to startup disks, and let's see. Yeah, it's just showing mine here because uh, this is this is the server itself that's serving it up. But if you went on your clients in here, they would then see this uh, net install image in there, and they could click on that and restart into that image and then start the process of installing it. So it makes it very convenient for them to be able to use. So I'm just going to close that down. 
So that's all I have for the net install service. Uh, like I said, it, it can come in really handy, uh, especially if you've got Macs that just happen for some reason not to have the recovery partition or they're older Macs that just don't have that. It makes it very convenient for people to be able to install uh, the OS X uh, onto their Macs. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.